Hi guys, my name is Adam Balazs, welcome to the Malawi documentary. Today I have only a short one, but I hope you will enjoy the video. Last time Lily and I were talking about our work at Team Malawi as uh, volunteers in Chekhova and as we said, usually in the afternoons we participated in uh, field visits. Mostly Lily went to the support groups uh, to hold some uh, sessions, but on a beautiful day we had the opportunity to do something different. One of the mornings after we finished breakfast, uh, Anderson came and he told us that uh, Charity was coming in a couple of minutes uh, to pick us up and uh, we are going to visit uh, the local primary school. So I got super excited because uh, for weeks I was asking Anderson to organize this small trip and uh, show us around in the primary school where, uh, by the way, Lovness was uh, a teacher. So what Anderson said that if they don't have a uniform and then they don't go to school, is it that there is a rule that they have to have it or is more yeah, like they feel ashamed if they don't have it? They uh, the, the thing is they feel ashamed and they also there is a rule that everyone mm. should put on school uniform. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and the, uh, some kids, it, it may happen that uh, the kids don't have uh, good, good clothes mm -hmm. to put on and to change every day. Yeah. So uh, sometimes they shun classes. Because of lack of school. Yeah. On the way there, she was talking about that uh, we are going to meet with the class and their head teacher because uh, some times ago the organization donated some uniforms and uh, shoes and uh, notebooks to the school and we had to go there to check uh, how it's going with the things they uh, donated. She was also explaining that uh, although some students don't wear the uniforms, as a general rule, it is mandatory to, uh, to have them. And in case some people don't have the money to afford the uniforms or if it's really used or uh, they don't have shoes, they tend to skip the school instead of going there in what they have uh, because they feel ashamed. When we got to the location of the school, we saw uh, a bunch of buildings and people sitting outside under the trees on the ground. And as we got closer, we could see that uh, those people uh, sitting on the ground were actually students being on classes uh, and enjoying the nice weather in the shadows of the trees. Each building was actually a classroom, but because there was too many students, it was just impossible to fit them uh, into the classrooms at the same time. So many of the classes were held outside under the trees. There were no desks or uh, chairs and the students were just sitting on the ground and holding their notebooks uh, in their lap. As soon as we got into the area of the school, maybe they had a break or something, but uh, suddenly every eyes were on us and uh, the people just started to shouting and uh, saying hi and um, Zungo, which means, by the way, a white person. So as the first thing, we went to the director's office where he actually welcomed us and uh, he had some words and uh, also later the head teacher of the, the class we, we visited joined us. So this is uh, Gilad Primary School. Uh, we, are, we are doing uh, a monitoring for a uh, girls boys some prefer project in which we distributed school uniforms to uh, 39 kids uh, at this school and now we want to make four up with the school uniform. But while we were waiting Lil and I was looking around in the, in the small office and uh, it was actually weird to see uh, how they operate because uh, like there were just posters everywhere on the walls all the rules they have in the in the school all the teaching materials uh, grading system uh, lectures teachers information uh, map of the school everything that they need to know is, was uh, on the walls handwritten on these posters and the interior school had only one computer, uh, which was actually donated by uh, another organization years back. So after that, we went outside to a classroom, which was actually half open, half closed. It was uh, weird to say what, what was it actually, but the class uh, was already waiting there for us. The director again welcomed us and then uh, there was a small presentation for the students uh, about why we were there and um, he was talking about a lot of things but uh, really we couldn't really understand because actually it was on uh, Chicheva their own language and after that Charity also had some words for the students. When this uh, whole presentation and uh, meeting with the classroom was done, uh, before we left uh, we also got the opportunity to sit down with uh, two of the teachers, the head teacher and another one. Furthermore, we got the chance to look a bit around in the school. Through this short uh, experience, we learned a lot about uh, education system and, uh, and uh, schools in general uh, in Malawi. 
also the children at the house uh, talked a lot about how and what they are learning in the school and it was shocking to see how can the education be so similar and uh, different at the same time from the European standards that we have. They also have the 8 4, four years uh, schema, uh, primary school, high school and uh, university with mostly the same subjects but without the facilities that we are used to at home. So just to provide more information, I would like to give you guys 5 facts about education in Malawi that you might didn't know. The primary schools in Malawi were made free in 1994 and this policy boosted the enrollment to primary schools from 1.6 million to 3 million. However, with this influx of the students, the teaching quality decreased. This is due to the weak infrastructure, uh, poor hygiene and uh, low education quality. Children have to learn under the trees because more of them are attending the schools and there are not enough uh, classrooms to house uh, all of them. So as a result, the students are being denied to learn under normal conditions uh, due to the lack of resources such as uh, desks, chairs, notebooks and um, any kind of teaching material. They have to be in an environment with poor sanitation, without proper toilets and uh, without clean water resource. The government also made the provision that for uh, every 60 students there should be one uh, teacher allocated it. but in most cases this uh, ratio is way higher and and this leads us to our next fact Malawi faces one of the world's worst teaching shortage in the first grade the teacher student ratio is around 1 to 130 this is mostly because of the expenses uh, associated with hiring new teachers to be able to attract uh, qualified teachers rural communities must uh, offer housing which is a significant cost for them and many of the uh, quality issues uh, facing the Malawian schools are uh, because of the lack of motivation from the teachers. They face poor work conditions, uh, weak social amendments and uh, lack of health coverage. The third fact is that uh, only 35% of the children in Malawi are actually finishing primary school. More than half of the population of the country lives under the poverty line. Many children enroll and then drops out of their schools uh, because of employment responsibilities at home or because of illness. Especially for the girls, it is a common thing to drop out of the school because of marriages, pregnancy or contracting HIV or AIDS. And with around 4.6 million children enrolling to schools throughout Malawi, only 8% of them are actually uh, finishing secondary school. Besides primary school, the uh, government doesn't fully fund any other uh, education levels. For instance, the government uh, encouraged the communities to introduce preschool into their society but does not uh, give them the funds to do that. And therefore, most of the preschools are run voluntarily and uh, remain unregistered. Over the past couple of years, the Malawian government uh, committed to allocate 18% of the national budget to the educational sector. And with this commitment, Malawi has the highest education expenditure in Africa. That's it for today guys, thank you for watching, I hope you learned something new about life in Malawi. Smash the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you would like to see more of my face. Ring the bell if you want to get notified every time I upload a new video. And stay tuned, because we have only two more episodes left to go. See you guys in the next one, bye.